Good morning. This is Ken Blaylock with SDG Bible Study. That's the Soli Deo Glory Bible Study coming to you on this Monday morning, January 9th, 2023. And we will this morning continue in our reading of the book, from the book, The Jesus Story, a blending of the four Gospels. This morning we will be uh, continuing as we are in the second year of ministry of Jesus Christ, our Lord. So join me as we read together. As, as evening fell, his disciples had gone down to the sea, boarded the boat, and started to sail across to Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. Then a strong wind began blowing, and the sea became rough. Jesus, alone on the land, saw them straining at, the oar at their oars. The boat was now in the middle of the sea and was being pounded by waves whipped up by wind, which was blowing against them. In the fourth watch of the night, after they had rowed between three and four miles, Jesus walked toward them on the sea. He intended to come beside them, but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea and getting closer to the boat, they were frightened and said, It is a ghost. They cried out in fear because they all saw him and were terrified. Take courage, Jesus called out to them at once. It is I. Don't be afraid. Then Peter answered, Lord, if it, if it really is you, tell me to join you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Peter then climbed out of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the howling wind, he was frightened. He began to sink. Lord, save me, he shouted. Jesus quickly extended his hand and caught, and caught him. You have so little faith, he said to Peter. What made you doubt? Then they willingly received him in the boat, and the wind stopped after they climbed into the boat. All of them were confounded and filled with awe because they hadn't understood about the loaves of bread. Their hearts were unreceptive, but they worshipped him, saying, you, tr you are truly the Son of of God. Just then they arrived at the shore where they were where they were heading in the region of Gennesaret and they got out of the boat. People there recognized Jesus at, at once. They ran throughout the countryside and brought those who were ill carrying them on mats to wherever they heard he was. Every place Jesus went, whether a village, a town, or the countryside, they kept laying the sick in the marketplaces and begging to be allowed just to touch the edge of his garment. And everyone who touched it was restored to health. So now we've completed the second year of ministry. And on to the third year of, of, the, of ministry. And that would be from April AD 31 to March AD 32. The next day, the people who remained on the other side of the sea realized that no other boat had been there except the one, one Jesus' disciple had entered. Jesus hadn't entered their boat. They had gone off by themselves. Then other boats from Tiberias landed close to where they had eaten the bread after Jesus gave thanks. When the people saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they climbed aboard the boats and sailed to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You don't look for me because you saw some miracles, but you filled your stomachs with, your, with bread. Don't work for food that spoils, but for the lasting food that gives eternal life. The Son of Man can give you such food because God the Father has placed his seal of approval on him. Then they ask him, what sort of things should we be doing to satisfy God's requirements? Jesus answered, the work God requires is this, believe in the one he sent. What mir miracle are you doing, they ask, to convince us we should believe you? What demonstration do you offer? 
our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As the scripture says, he gave them heavenly bread to eat. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you the heavenly bread. Rather, it is my father who gives you the true heavenly bread. God's bread comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Then, sir, they said, give us this bread from now on. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never grow hungry. And the one who believes in me will never get thirsty. But I'm telling you that, but I'm telling you that though, that though you've seen me, you don't believe. Everyone the Father gives to me will surely come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will never send away. I have come down from heaven to do the will of the one who sent me, not to do my own will. And the will of the Father who sent me is this, that I should not lose even one of all those he has given me. Indeed, I will raise them all up at the last day. The will of the one who sent me is this, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise them up at the last day. The Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. They kept say, saying, isn't he Jesus, the son of Joseph? Don't we know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Stop your grumbling, Jesus said. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. One of the prophets wrote, God will teach everyone, everyone who has listened to and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who has come from God. He has seen the Father. I tell you the truth, the one who believes in me has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors in the desert, desert ate the manna and yet they died. But this is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. The bread, the bread I offer is my body, which I give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue with one another. How can he give us his body to eat? They demanded. I tell you the truth, he said, unless you eat the body of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life. Whoever eats my body and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. My body is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my body and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. As the living, as the living Father sent me, and I live through the Father, so the one who eats my body will live through me. So the one who eats my body, excuse me, this is the bread that came down from heaven. This bread is very different from the manna your ancestors ate because they died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard him, they said, this is a difficult message. Who can accept it? Jesus sensed that his disciples were grumbling about this and said to them, does this offend you? Then what should happen if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was, was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The mere body accomplishes nothing. My words are both spirit and life. But some of you don't believe. Jesus knew from the very first who did not believe and even who would betray him. He said, this is why I said to you that no one can come to me unless my father permits. From that time on, many of his disciples left and no longer followed him. Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom can we go? You have words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus replied, didn't I choose the 12 of you? And yet one of you is a devil. He was speaking of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. 
though he was of the twelve, he would one day betray. That's going to conclude our reading from God's word that we find here in the book, The Jesus Story. As we see some tough teaching from Jesus that many of his, his disciples did, would not accept that Jesus is the true bread of life. And the, him speaking of eating of his body and drinking of his blood. Uh, of course, that's figurative, uh, not literal, but uh, that you'd have to one day have faith in him in his broken body and shed blood. I hope that's you this morning. I hope you place your trust and faith in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation and not any effort or works in and of yourself. I hope you have a blessed day today and a great week. Soli Deo Gloria.